Hello, I'm Nick or whatever. So we've got this Osram LED light bulb. And it's here for a specific reason because you wouldn't you wouldn't normally expect to see a, a light bulb, an LED light bulb on the bench, especially my bench on this channel. But uh, the reason is because for some reason this specific one, uh, I, I can't for certain say that all Osram bulbs do it, but this specific one is really strange if you uh, you know, you run it for a while, then a light fixture, or open air one, everything normal, everything correct. Turn off, and then try to turn the light back on in a relatively short amount of time, a minute or two. Uh, it doesn't start because it tripped its over temperature, and you can feel the base is, like, a little too hot. Like, you know how warm LEDs get, and you're like, ah, it's fine, but it, it's, like, too hot to touch, really. So we'll want to take a look inside and see if maybe there was a a manufacturing fault or maybe it's <laughs> some other weird oddity but yeah it's uh, for some reason just this specific bulb trips its over temperature like way too often uh, and it's also kind of scary to me it's like it doesn't trip while it's running but only if you try to turn it back on I mean, maybe you know in rush current all kind of stuff who knows but we'll see what the the circuitry is like and let that be the judge and I've already pre-popped the top off so it's actually relatively easy but we can show Oh, okay. Oh, relatively easy within reason, I guess. There we go. So it's just these little clip tabs, and then you're immediately shown the several little chips, the eight chips. You got your, yep, silicone wire. We can short it supply. <laughs> silicone wires, probably an aluminum back PCB onto a piece of aluminum. Let's go ahead and take that off. What are the odds this is right? Ah, oh, so wrong. Looks like just the two screws. Hopefully we'll see some thermal grease and such. Oh, is this wrong too? And grips kind of. Oh, and the board says GX LED98R30-8 LED V1. So this is a version one board. Oh, I can actually see the grease. This is gonna be, there we go, stuck down. Oh, it's a very soft aluminum heat sink. I'm actually bending it, just trying to pry it out, not actually knowing the correct way to do this. I might have to attack from the base. All right, so we've been squeezing at the vise, hopefully breaking the base a little bit, and now the idea is it'll pop right off. The idea is invalid, but maybe it's broken enough this will release it. There we go. <laughs> All right, pop that out. Oh, interesting. So the neutral, uh, they just hang the wire over the edge here and press on the screw mount. And then this fuse resistor is attached to the uh, actual hot internally. So that, that was kind of necessary to get it out, although it looks like you're pretty much forced to go that way. So as expected, the heat sink has to come out. We could try pushing it out this way, though. There we go. Oh, that's a very nice heat sink. All right. We're, in fact, still trapped. We'll have to desolder. Poor man's desoldering job here, just to be done. I don't want to reuse this specific bulb anyway, so... We can use this little cup for something. All right, so your heat sink for all the light is this little bell thing. We'll go ahead and weigh it and see how much. Uh, it's very light. So we'll guess uh, five and a half grams. I'm not going to cheat here. We'll clean off the thermal compound. Our high accuracy scale here. What are we set to? Grams. Good. Ten. It's exactly ten. Ah, oh, I knew it was. I was, I was guessing ten in my head. I went, ah, I'm crazy. No, it's ten. We've entered our fake microscope mode here. All right. So there's the input fuse. We'll have to take off the heat shrink. It looks like it's just a resistor, but we'll have to take. Yeah, let's see if we can focus a bit better here. Oh. So here we've got the fuse marked F1, but we'll have to take off the heat shrink to be for certain that. Uh, it's just a resistor, because it's what it feels and looks like, but uh, we'll check that in a second. Uh, probably in-rush limiter resistor, and then we've got a uh, 
Emma Vigil's filter. Assuming so. And you've got several large high voltage caps, you know, high mains voltage. Uh, switch supply. The actual transistor, or <laughs> transistor. The actual, uh, it's really weird. The transformer is like loose. It was attached at an angle. There's this double stick tape, I think, to hold it down, but are the solder joints broken, or is it just... No, the, the joints are fine. That's really dodgy, in my opinion. I don't like that at all. Anyway, next to it is... Uh, two capacitors. You got a 63 volt, 10 microfarad uh, by... Uh, we'll check the other one, see if it's the same brand. Oh, here we go. I'm not actually familiar with that logo. I don't want to be wrong here. We'll see if I can figure it out in post. And this is an 82 microfarad, 63 volt capacitor with omitting one more, I assume, capacitor with our little very, these are actually really nice wires, the silicone sheathing to them. Here's the back side with the control chip. I mean, it's definitely just been uh, glue dotted down and then flow soldered because it's of all the through hole components in the top and it. It looks pretty messy. I'll, I'll visually inspect myself because I can't get the focus on the camera quite perfect like I usually do. And see if there's any obvious problems, but really I'm sure it's just strange combination. The color gradient on the board is kind of interesting. You can see we go from white to weirdish brown. I don't want to know, I don't know if it's specifically thermal effects or if it's uh, just a the process of building it. We'll take a look inside the fuse here. There you go, that's your fuse. A little input resistor. So is this one across the yeah, so we've got filter. We've got the filter cap directly across the input, the live and neutral, and then this resistor limits the inrush to the neutral into the bridge rectifier, and then you've got as well as the fuse that comes in from the live that goes directly into the bridge rectifier. Bridge rectifier then looks like it's immediately filtered by this cap. Does it go directly into the others? Into this choke or bead or whatever it would be. Which then goes through another capacitor there across the line into, looks like directly to the drive side. Yeah, probably directly into the drive of this chip. Which then switches it. Assume that's our entire switching component. So we'll take the number off the, the drive chip here. You at home can probably read it. I'll have to do this in real life. Oh, that is really hard to read. It's been like silk screen, but it's quite a low res. Oh, actually under magnification it's great. So that's an R symbol and it's an R8608SF with underneath a JMP29BAJ. You know, this is less of a transformer because it's only this will never focus. It's only two pins. So they're just using it as, well, like an inductor or a choke? Because it's pretty certain that's just two pins on it. We've got the one here and the one there. Uh, yeah, that pin. That pin. So yeah, that's not really like a, an isolated transformer. Overall, the supply is not the most dangerous thing I've ever seen. It's just messy and less than perfect, but it's not, it's definitely not just a uh, capacitive dropper and just kind of relying on luck for everything to work. Uh, leave, leave your thoughts below what you think of this. Go ahead and look at the actual LED chip part. So we got the two leads soldered down and then we've got the LEDs. So let's try to figure out the arrangement. So the, the negative Negative goes to one, 
to at least just in series. Looks like it looks like all of them are in series. As far as I can tell, it goes there, hops over, 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 and then hops over to the final path. So if I stick the meter across it, it will probably not light at all. But let's see if it reads as a diode. It's like, no, stop it, what are you doing? Is this not powerful enough to drive one of these? Unless there's some coding I can't get through, I don't think uh, the multimeter can power one of these guys. I wonder if there's multiple chips in there. It's as if a microscope would be useful. Oh, you know what? Yeah, it looks like there's at least two distinct dyes within each of these chips. The contrast probably won't exist, maybe we'll get a macro in there, but hopefully you can tell it looks like there's at least two dyes in each chip, so maybe the forward voltage is just too much for the yield multimeter. Let's see if I can get this to light at all. Yep, <laughs> may or may not have popped it, but hopefully the resistor is a good enough value, right? Huh? So, yes, you, you can in fact light them. Maybe we can do uh, some analysis on the briefest of flash we got there. Yeah, the back, so, yeah, it's just an aluminum back uh, PCB. Well, the good news is that the heating wasn't too bad of an issue. The caps aren't bulging or anything. Uh, I'm going to look up this chip, figure out kind of the data sheet, and we might make a little post-announcement thing. I I don't I don't know what the problem is, so maybe maybe someone else knows. But you're going through a resistor, but already to here, nine volts is not enough to get past the four voltages of these diodes. We can see right here it works, and here we can just barely see them. So nine volts through a uh, hey, that's not the resistor I thought that was. Oh, oops. Well, anyway, so 9 volts through a 100 ohm resistor uh, can't overcome more than two of these chips, but one it can just handle. This resistor is probably going to light on fire at some point, but this is the price you pay for science. Oh, come on. Oh, different brands. Well, it's greater than 20 volts. That's good. Alright, now we got 27 volts. And probably a fire hazard on our hands. It's fine. I should probably move metal away so I don't short anything. Do, -do, -do. do I grab a bigger resistor or just uh, do this shortly? Alright, so two. Crazy bright. Three, crazy bright. It's crazy bright. Four, crazy bright. Yeah. Crazy bright. We've hit our limit. So we can go up to here. Actually, it's a bit dim. We'll go back one more. Ta-da! So with enough 9-volt batteries, you could make a <laughs> portable light. And this has been the LED 9BR30. Oh, and it has dim in it, so apparently you can dim this thing. That's interesting. I wasn't even thinking about dimming it.